Hi, welcome to my Petrichor walkthrough. This is a quick look at some of the features of this track. Ever since I started producing in 2008, I was obsessed with the concept of rain as a musical idea. And the title of this track, Petrichor, refers to the smell of rain. And I chose instruments which I feel represent various parts of a storm. So the steel pan and flute feel like rain. Uh, they have a sort of pitter patter sound to them, like falling raindrops. The vocals and longer flutes, like wind. The bass elements and drums, thunder. Uh, it's a bit conceptual, but I hope you like it. Okay, so this is my Petrichor project file. It's a pretty simple track, so I'm not really doing anything super fancy in this one. And the intent is mostly just to take you through it, show you some things that I think are central to the song. Let's get started. So the song began development around this particular melody, this particular ascending melody and chord progression right here, which is played by a Mansuri flute. You know the one, if you've heard the song, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and that along with the steel pan, I felt like it sounded kind of like rainfall. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie, I definitely used the steel fan because of that one C418 Minecraft track. In any case, the song starts with our steel pan melody, which is a uh, 8DO contact patch. Then we've got some choirs that come in to build tension. These are a combination of East West and Lyra Ivy's voice. And we've got our bass and also Contrabass, which is uh, an east-west patch. Uh, and then a, a Bansuri as well, like a long Bansuri. Where is it? Here it is. All of this to, to create tension. Um, and then we've got our drums as well. We've got a groove that starts here. Which kind of... I kind of dig with just the steel pan, but... I needed more elements to build tension at this point in the song. I couldn't just have the steel pan, unfortunately. One little cheeky thing that I'm doing here is uh, automating this gross beat mix level. So this is just like a sort of like a drill pattern. It becomes a little more obvious if I turn it on, like I'll show you. And so I'm just automating the mix level of that so that I can have a, a little drill part of my of all my percussion. All the percussion is going into this gross beat. And that's a neat little trick. I love that plugin for some reason. It's actually just so incredibly useful. Even if you're just using the presets, there's so many weird things you can do. I made the vocal chops in Esoteria. I made those using a vocoder and gross beat. So moving on to the chorus, I'm doing some cheeky volume automation here. This is like the this is on the master. So we're actually down, I'm using an, an EQ for some reason, um, we're down 2.7 decibels. Which makes the chorus really hit. And this is a trick that I've been using, you know, since the beginning of time. That's not true. But you can combine it with other things too. For example, this is the master stereo separation, which is this knob here. Zoom in on that. Zoom. Enhance. And I'm making it more mono. So this is like, what does this say? 55% merged. Reducing the width is a really good way of making the chorus feel much wider than it actually is, because we don't want our stereo image to be too intense. It's always a good idea to keep an eye on your stereo image. Because it's actually the case that our build-up is much wider than our chorus. So reducing the stereo width is kind of like turning the volume down during the build-up. You're sort of taking energy out, uh, only to put it back in at the chorus and give it some oomph. You can do that with automating reverb up as well to make your build-up sound all kind of washed out. And then suddenly you take that reverb away right as the chorus hits. Uh, and you can also do that, of course, with like a high pass or a low pass or a chorus effect. So many different options there. Um, but here I've just gone for the tried and true, old faithful 
volume automation. And just to show you what that's like without the volume automation. The chorus feels like a downgrade. You know, that 2.7 dB makes all the difference. So I'm gonna uh, just talk about some stuff in the chorus. I'd like to touch on this flute patch by Andrew Huang. I was really happy with how this melody turned out. And I'm doing all these little transitional notes. And of course, these are these are like slide notes here because I've got the, the glide over here. So anytime two notes overlap, one will slide into the next. So it's that, along with the fact that, you know, it has a, a lot of vibrato with this LFO here, um, the slides and the little articulation notes, I think gives it a very human, humanized sound. And I'm also automating the reverb with my good old friend Valhalla Supermassive. Favorite reverb for some reason, even though it's technically a delay. So I'm just going to take us to the first breakdown now. I'm going to talk about the vocals from Lyra Ivy. And we recorded these pretty late in the development of the track, probably like 80% of the way done. And I was just like, can you write me some lyrics and just let's just sing them? You sing them. I didn't sing them. And um, this is what she came up with. We, we did this in pretty much 30 minutes, I think. I'm just going to take you through kind of like the, the vocal processing. In the sun. And that's like just the raw vocal. We've got a harmony here. In the sun. And I've got automated reverb. In the sun. To give it that lush tail. And then finally, we have a vocoder. In the and, and the vocoder is pretty subtle. In the and I've also, I've got Chroma, this new Chroma plugin, which some of you probably know about by Zynth Audio. I've got that on there just to give it some extra spice. You can't really tell, but I, I wanted an excuse to use it because I haven't really used it yet. And one feature of all my old drummer bass tracks was that I always used Addictive Keys Mark 1, which is like, it's like some Rhodes. And I've got them like super distorted here, playing really low fifths. I thought that was just such a cool combination with Lyra's voice. Those, just those two together. So there is one more thing that I want to talk about in this section, which is just this little randomized thing here. Um, and this is made just using the piano roll randomizer, which is always a really fun tool to play around with. You can just hit Alt R, hit, uh, hit pattern, and then you can select your scale. And it'll it'll just it'll just make make a cute little little thing for you. You can change the parameters. Um, let's choose a different scale. And I think later in the track, like at the outro, I think right here, I think I'm reversing it just for a bit of a sense of finality. So I'm going to take us now to the second chorus, which has same uh, same idea with the flute melody, but this time um, the chord progression is twice as fast. So I've just shortened the length of each chord to be half of what it was. One other thing that sets this second chorus apart is initially we had this bass, which is just like a, a, a bunch of stuff. Like it's a phase plant patch, a serum patch, and some some noise essentially, bass noise, super distorted. And I thought I want something more rhythmic, so I ended up changing that into 
guitar. And this is not, I think these are not the greatest sounding guitars anymore. I don't really know outside of contact patches where I can get good sounding guitars. This is just a east-west patch. If you have any uh, recommendations for good sounding guitar VSTs, I would love to hear it. And yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Thanks for watching, and please do stream the song. I would appreciate it. I know there hasn't been a lot of content on this channel. I do have plans for like short form tutorials uh, that I can also post to other platforms. So there will be stuff appearing here in the future. Um, and so if you do subscribe, I do appreciate it. Please give the video a like, hit the bell, you know, whatever. Do, do what you gotta do, I don't, I don't know what to say here. Bye.